songs rest in fire. Aye. I've been direct, man. Hey, bless and love to each and every one. Going into the wee hours of the evening. I am here. Maybe six minutes now moving up into the hour of 11 o'clock. Oh, glorify a breast minute. the thumbs up and encourage a friend and encourage a companion and let someone know that you are in the tiger's nest and of course we're doing it on radio and new tv at this moment and talking about the youtube as vibration but you can share it anywhere you can share it on your whatsapp share it with a friend on facebook share it on your wheels you can share it on twitter instagram yeah share it all around as we definitely do it at this moment in the studios here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Royal family, we give thanks as we are celebrating the Earth Strong Empress Menin at this moment. And even before I go too far, I know because, you know, the scholars are always on standby. The snipers of scholarship are always on standby. And I'm quite aware that the celebration of Empress Menin is also carried out on the 2nd of April. Some even argue that it's the 3rd and, and whatever the case is. And of course, for me, in times, Rastafari always upheld the 25th of March from wherever that you know concept came from. But we celebrate it all. We are very thankful for the mother of creation. Bless the love, honor of Empress Naya. I give down to your presence here. Oh, yeah. Now, we are celebrating Honorable Empress of Menin, Earth's strong life, and, you know, and I know even the subject area that <laughs> would be seen on the board, ones may consider it quite mystic, and I know for sure it is provocative to many. You know, ones may be saying, man, I got this, I got this, you know, alarm here, this alert, this what you call it, reminder. And 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 I, I, I awoke because the priest was live. 11 o'clock. Wow, this gotta be a serious message. And I see on the I see on the caption here, Haile Selassie's marriage before Empress Menin. What kind of discussion is that? I don't want to talk about that. I, I don't believe in that thing. Fire button that. No, that exists. Eh? In fact, just the other day, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine. It didn't really reach to that point. But because I know him well, I know for sure it could have reached to that point. Then we were having a reasoning. And because I know the brother is um, um, somewhat studied, I thought he was he was up to speed with the fact that Haile Selassie I had a marriage prior to Empress Menin. So he said, no, 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 he can't believe that. He started to go into Haile Selassie's pure. Don't tell me that. I said, well, listen, brother, 
I understand how you feel, you know, but I, I, I can only relate to you what I would have read. He said, brother, not everything you read, you can believe. And then also, you know, I said, well, listen, he, he even has a, a daughter with the... His, no, 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 I don't believe in that. The man, the man write everything and... Uh, so, well, the same thing with Empress men into it. No, man, man, you're taking the thing too far. <laughs> and and I show, I'm sure those of you who have been listening to me for some time, you always hear me recall this episode when I was in Barbados several years ago. I got to be talking about maybe 17 years ago. Mount Carmel, give thanks to the brothers you know what I mean, Brother Mike and all the, the 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 loved ones at Mount Carmel. But I'm just giving you a reality experience. I would have mentioned this several times. And I had to do, at that time, I was very, you know, uh, what was the term? Well, zealous, yes. I mean, the zeal has gotten stronger, but the 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 the, the, the means and ways that I would have expressed the zeal is a bit different today. But at that time, man, I would be moving around with a heap of CDs and DVDs. All those videos that you're seeing on YouTube today, most of them, of Haile Selassie, man, we would have already had them on DVD or video cassette, I'm telling you. And anywhere we go, anywhere around the island or anywhere around the world, <laughs> we're carrying these DVDs and we're showing everybody, look at my king moving you know and and at that time eh, this is before youtube was kicking off and any of this stuff eh? i mean myspace and all of that wasn't even around yet but this was the time well maybe it was around but it wasn't definitely nothing to speak of so this was a time when you see a video of Haile selassie or you see a video of of prince emmanuel or anything of that sort you're like wow you never see anything like this so, you know, it would it would delight myself to show brothers of the faith and sisters of the faith, our moving creator, our moving God, the excellency himself in motion, you know, speaking to Kennedy, speaking to Elizabeth the Queen, going here and going there, traveling on the plane, coronation, what a joy, you know. Even that video, that famous video that they have there, that BBC did, um, um, the Lion of Judah. I like to call it Lion on Judah, but, you know, that was one of the, the main early videos that I would have come across about the King of Kings. So, yeah, to make the long story short, yes, you know how it is. There's a part in the um, the World Tour video where they show uh, the excerpt when Haile Selassie, 1950, I think it was uh, five visited England, Britain, and when he met Queen Elizabeth, he gave her the kiss of death. I'm telling you, when I was playing that video itself, I remember one of the brothers jumped up and said, no, no, he not believed that. Lock that off. And like everyone else was like, what, what was going on? No, man, the man, the man, cut that up, cut that up. Nothing can go so. My king ain't kissing that. Impossible. Lock that off. And he 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 actually left the room. <laughs> no. I mean, I could understand, you know, especially when you are new to certain things. But I'm saying still, uh, maybe most of us have been there too. So there's nothing wrong. We're not mocking anyone. Some of us are there. Some of us have been there for a long time. And we, through some level of ignorance, we don't want to leave from there. So when we hear things that somewhat go against our long time, well engraved belief, we get afraid. Then we get defensive. And then we even act out of ourselves. So you see a video of Haile Selassie holding Queen Elizabeth, literally bowing down and kissing her hand. You jump. You know, that man that leave Rastafari because of that, you know. So when the Hebrew Israelites back you up in a corner and say, yes, you, your king, your king, he, he bowed down to the queen of England, what kind of king is that? And you cannot explain yourself and you, you have no rational. And even if you can't explain it, it's not about explaining nothing to anybody. 
It's about comprehending within yourself what's going on, what you're dealing with. Be sure of yourself. You know, but yet it is still good that you can explain yourself because others would be listening to hear your explanation. You understand? Nothing wrong with winning a soul or two. So I'm just showing you that 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 knowledge is good, but understanding is much better. And it's good that you comprehend what you see. So, so again, to even the subject at hand, even an Empress Menin's Earth Day. And uh, I'm going to be taking the subject from a different angle, not just from the history books, you know, because the history books would clearly show you. I'm sure many of you who have studied know, know, uh, know of the history, Lich Jiatsu would have been the individual. Remember, Lee Jiatsu is the, the individual that would have uh, been uh, picked by Menelik II to be the emperor after him. And according to the history, and I will be giving you a, a bit more clarity on that in a moment. You know, maybe I should go straight to that family. In fact, let me do that right away. I must say, I, I, I wanted to carry you into the heavens first. But since we started there, and I'm just holding a meditation with the family, let me carry you there. Let me just prepare the speech for you. But while we're getting that ready, you know, let me just remind you, those of you who were with us um, yesterday um, for the lecture, for the webinar, Again, we are very thankful for your presence. Let me remind you, for those who missed it, you didn't miss it because you can still get it, but that is up to you. It is now a part of our webinar collection. So just like our other webinars, for example, Haile Selassie Rastafari and Freemasonry, um, the Santa Claus Massacre, uh, fairy tale holidays and nursery crimes, they, well, that's why I think that one is the execution or uh, one of these things here. Um, also, on the Pirate Squad, I can't even remember what is the fairy tale for the and nursery crimes webinar. And of course, the other webinars. Oh, of course, uh, uh, the, the Living Gods of Kemet, really one of my favorites, I must say. Three part mm -hmm. Tutankhamun, Akhenaten, Semenkare, and of course, Ramesses, the second Ursa, Maatra, Setepenra. Ramesu Mary Amin, the second one. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, previous webinars that we would have done, and they are all available on our website. The link is in the description below. Priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com. Priest Isaac Institute. Uh, no, that's the that's the email. Priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com. But that's good. Just email me and tell me that you'd like to get a copy of the webinar that we just completed, Shiva Aksum and the Ark. Very, very, very beautiful presentation. I must say I took it in today, almost three hours worth of information. Some of you would have seen a, you know, a short preview of it earlier. I mean, very, very beautiful presentation. You know what I really want to do as well? Of course, let me just highlight this. Since this is the season, of course, <laughs> this is what is referred to as a Holy Week. But it, it, it's deep, you know. One of the things we highlighted previous day, yesterday, in the lecture is, is the importance of comprehending symbolism, the importance of comprehending the allegory, and at the same time, you know, knowing how to see it in history, because we did a lot of that yesterday. That is how we came to the conclusion that Makeda, the first, yet still the seventh, Kandake, for those who were there, and for those who will be getting a copy of, of, of the webinar, you know, this is how we showed you that Kandake or Makeda, the queen of Sheba I'm speaking of, just like all the other Kandakes, if you notice, you know, we highlighted several Kandakis. We highlighted several queen mothers. We highlighted several wives of Ra'amun for those who were there and for those who will be getting 
the lecture, the many wives of Ra'amun, Salomon, and all of them had to appear before Ra'amun, Amun Ra, and ask him permission for their son Menelik II to take the throne. That is what the queen of Sheba, the Kandake, did. She did nothing strange, nothing you know, unique, to be honest, when you compare her actions to all the other Kandake. That's what the Kandake does. It's actually something written in law that she must go before Amun and petition for him for the king to take the throne. It's very, very deep. But anyway, when you get the, the webinar, you will see for yourself the depths. And remember, those of you who are subscribers, eh? you do not have to pay for the webinar at all. You should you should be getting it in due season. And I'm um, just highlighting the Easter season, as I said, it is called. We know that it's the moment of resurrection for those who are trodden within the order of King Emmanuel. Don't take it as a joke. This is not a play, play, play uh, week that we are in now. This holy week, as it's called, is no joke. There's a strong energy that comes through this week. Don't worry, we get into the the, the highly Selassie and everything in the moment, but that's what we're talking about. This is a serious week, the Holy Week leading up to the resurrection day, you know? So for those who have been keeping fast to their Lent and, and those who have not, still vigilance is very, very important. But just highlighting, you know, as you can clearly see, the, uh, the, the, the resurrected, of the, the ankh. You see the ankh now with the symbol of the cap, which is the resurrected arms. Yesterday I was trying to remember that on um and what's her name, the T. So you see the arm, the cap, and the car is the car has the solar, the solar R R, the symbol of resurrection, and the ankh now is standing up on the Dijed, which is also the symbol of the backbone. And you can see the angels um flanking the Ankh, which is, this should be uh, Isis and Nefti, if I'm not mistaken. But if you look to the right now, you can see the carbon copy of this whole rendition here. When you see uh, Mr. Jesus, the one to be Christ now, it's the same thing in the whole resurrection. You see him have his having his hands up in the ear, similar to the car. The son now would have fell down behind his head. That's one thing. Those those who came after the ancient comedic tradition, the halo was once the sun, the Ra, on top of the head. So you see Ra on top of the head of all the deity. But now afterwards, you see the sun falling back behind the head and it becomes the halo. But the sun is still there between the arms, just like the ankh, which is the symbol of life, by the way. So, and, and the, the whole vibration of the car is symbolic of resurrection. It has to do with going into the afterlife. And again, the two angels that are to the side of the, the resurrected Ankh represent the two, I guess, angels at the side of the Jesus, uh, the so-called Christ coming out of the tomb there. So, the, the, I mean, the question is, which one is older than which? And which one came before which, you, you know, and for sure, although the rendition is not seen here, we all know that the Aset and the, the Nefti and even the Hathor are the original goddesses that are seen with the, the wings. So just bringing that to the forefront so you can get a better a comprehension. Now, you know, even before I get to that good brother dear, let me also highlight that, of course, you were just gazing there at one of the grandsons of his imperial majesty or god and king, Emperor Haile Selassie I, and that is Dr. Aswawasan Asarate. And uh, we will be hearing a bit from him as it relates to the subject area that we are speaking of. I just want to highlight, let me just make sure that everything is in order. I want to highlight, um, okay. 
want to highlight the the full moon is on us at the moment. It is now the 25th of March. And at this time, in fact, this is real time, in time, this time, whatever the time is right now. As I said, we are dealing with what today is. Today is the 25th day of March. And uh, let me just make sure the time is right. So we highlight the whole vibration that is taking place. Now, let me just say, even before we pull up the information that I'm looking for, now, we all know that from time to time, your our good brother will come and just show where we differ from what is taking place in the archaeological expression or the archaeological belief. Okay, we have 15 minutes after the hour of 11 o'clock, so the time is perfect. And not uh, archaeological, sorry, astrological, astrological, astrology. And in the astrological world, <laughs> we, are, we are told to believe that at this moment, the moon is full, which it is, and it is a Libra moon. Now, why I had to come out this month? Of course, you know that every month, the astrology is wrong. That's for sure. I think we would have definitely made our point with that. So we don't really make it our business every month to just jump on it. Full moon, new moon is just off. And we have explained why it's off. Because the sun moved one degree every 72 years. So if the last 720 years you have not adjusted your astrological charts, well, that means you are at least 10 degrees behind. And that will create a confusion. So those of us who observe the heaven and map the heavens and observe the movement of the sun and where it is at what time, we understand that many people that say that they're Gemini are not Gemini. And many people have said that they are Taurus are not Taurus. And Capricorn are not Capricorn because the, the, the heavens is a living entity amongst us. It's not, it's not stagnant and it's not dead. So the astrologers internationally who seem not to study the living astronomy, most astrologers should just humble themselves and even at least if not bound to ancient astronomy, at least look into the uh, Vedic astrology, which at least the Vedic astrology aligns with the up to speed astronomical mathematics of the heavens. And that's the truth. Very good. So in a nutshell, the moon is not in Libra. The moon is in Virgo. And we had to highlight that because Virgo is our mother. Virgo is symbolic of the woman, the virgin, the first constellation in the zodiac belt, the first constellation in the ecliptic belt. This is why Revelation chapter 12 speaks of this woman who was clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. This is astronomy. This is ancient astronomy to be more precise. In fact, this is what they refer to it as precise astronomy. And the heavens now declare, declaring the glory shows you that she had a crown on her head of, 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 of 12 stars. All of this is very symbolic of the constellation of Virgo, which is symbolic of all women of right which is symbolic of the, the, the mother country which brought forth the man-child that was to rule all nations, the scales. So yes, when we observe Virgo, at a specific time of the year, what is called the fall equinox in the Northern Hemisphere, she's clothed with the sun. And every month at some time, the moon will be under her feet. At this moment, now, as I'm speaking to you, now, 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 the moon is as if it's resting on the back of Virgo. 
So the moon is in Virgo. The moon is as in Virgo as it can be. The moon is not in Libra. It is not even on its way to Libra as yet. Very important. Now, even at this time, there is a specific meteor shower. The anti-Helion meteor shower that is taking place literally inside of what you would consider to be the womb of Virgo. In fact, let me give you the Greek rendition so at least you have an idea uh, for those who may have missed a bit of what we are expressing, because expressing, pardon me, because when you observe Virgo, Virgo itself is not exactly the same rendition that you see on the art world. In fact, most things are not. But when you can see and observe the stars and you observe the lines, then you would pick up the true rendition as I as I said before, one of these days, we will not only remap these stars, because when we studied astronomy at first, there are some of these constellations that have been played with since that time. Some of them have been uh, manipulated to look like something else. And it literally takes away the true essence of what the constellation means. And of course, obviously, if somebody understands the mystics and the power of the constellations, they will be playing with the constellations. They will try to manipulate the truth. If the heavens really declaring the glory, some ones will try to even say, well, look, move this line and turn this line here and there. And that's the truth. Virgo, the constellation, should be more whole. You'll be able to see her eyes and her full head. And then now, even if we were to draw it in a, in, a, in, a, in a formation where a child could understand it, it would not necessarily look like what is uh, used universally, which is the Greek rendition, like what you're seeing on the screen. Because she's really supposed to be a woman laying on her back in travail, ready to bring forth a man-child. But I'm saying right in her womb right now, right, right now, which is very important, right inside of the womb of Virgo now, there is great activity. Now, as I'm speaking to you now, the anti-Helion uh, uh, meteor shower is taking place in her womb right now. In fact, in a few hours, the moon will literally pass over that area where the meteor shower is taking place. This is how this is how the ancient astronomer, you know, would read the heavens with understanding and comprehend what may be taking place uh, even within the womb. Yeah. Of those who would be connected to Virgo and the moon in Virgo at this time, depending on their 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 uh, their natal chart, their natal reading, and even their conception. It's deep. The heavens does declare the glory. So, so on the Earth Day of Empress Menin, we have the full moon. So it's a full moon on the Earth Day of Empress Menin. So we glorify, give thanks to that Rastafari. And the full moon on the Earth Day of Empress Menin is inside of Empress Menin, which is Virgo Day. <laughs> The, the, the mother constellation, the same constellation clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. That's why she had a crown on her head of 12 constellations or 12 stars, because she's the first of the, of the, the crown of constellation, because remember, it's a circle of constellation. Eh? 12 of them, some would say 13. So whatever the case is, she's the head, and there are 12 others then. So on her head was a crown of 12 stars, 12 constellations, and she crowned with the sun, the moon under her feet. That's Virgo, you know. So, so this is why she's symbolic in the heavens. The heavens really declares the glory, yeah? symbolic of the, the warrior woman, the warriors, symbolic of the mighty empresses at this moment, clearly symbolic of Mama Menin. Mm -hmm and the fullness of the moon, which represents the woman as well, 
the Oshud because Oshud went up to the moon in the Oruba uh, tradition. Took away the sweet water from the earth and she looked in her vanity glass until the brothers caught themselves. So the moon, as we know, the cycle of the woman is within the moon. Everything is well in order and well, well aligned. Empress Menin, in terms of Mama Menin, at this time, Queen Omega, as we would say, in such a fate mm -hmm. as we celebrate. And, and when the second comes around, or the third, whatever the case, because that's another thing you must keep in mind. Eh? Empress Menin celebrated her birthday when she became Empress. Because she was coronated Empress with the King of Kings in 1930, the 2nd of November. But when Empress Zadito died on the 2nd of April, exactly seven months before the King was coronated, he became Emperor right away. And she became Empress right away for her Earth Day, which is the 3rd of April, some say the 2nd, but all of that is still the same thing. So, so, so interestingly, she became the empress of, um, uh, of, of, of Abyssinia, of Ethiopia, on her Earth Day, when you look at the, the month of April as her Earth Day. So everything is still aligned. We do give thanks, life give on the keep of life. Selassie, Ja, Rastafari. Keep in mind, remember when they... Remember when they opened the, 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 the monastery in Jerusalem? They opened the monastery in Jerusalem. It was Empress Menin that officiated the ceremony. And I always bring that up because when you really comprehend the monastery, you know, and you know how the Ethiopian monks run their monastery, women and so can't even come in some of these places, not even a, a hen. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, not even a female animal. That's how serious they are. And uh, I'm not saying that man, all of the monasteries are not like that. Too. Don't get me wrong. But that's how they, they, they run the show. So, so in many, many corners. Mm -hmm. So, when Empress Menin went to Jerusalem, the, and they were opening the monastery. Not only was she there, she officiated over it. I mean, that's some serious stuff. You know, a woman, you know, officiating over the, the opening of the temple of the monks. Yeah. So give thanks, Mama Menin, and Press Menin, with such power and, 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 and glory amongst us. Now, as I was also saying, to get into, uh, I mean, a, a subject that we should have an understanding, especially those of us who have that heart-to-heart -heart connection and relationship with Negus Haile Selassie I. You know, as I said earlier, sometimes the things that some of us would prefer not to hear or want to believe or whatever the case is. Now, <clears throat> The good brother, brother uh, Aswawasan Asarati Kassa, also, yes, um, grandson of Emperor Haile Selassie I, also grandson of Ras Kassa the Great. So he definitely holds fast and proud of such both lineage, really. And Empress Menin, as I I did not mention this early, earlier. Empress Menin also being of the, the lineage of Prophet Muhammad. I don't know how many of the ones would know of that, that Empress Menin being of the lineage of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, interesting. So he launched a book, The Triumph and Tragedy of of, of the emperor, some of you would have already read it or have a copy of it. And that the launching of this book, I think, in London, I'm if I'm not mistaken, if it's not somewhere in Europe there, but I think he lives in Germany. So he had with him 
I think one Anthony Mockler. He had a panel there, Anthony Mockler, who well, to me, to some degree, even certain things he says throughout the whole presentation is like he really mocking. But so Anthony Mockler, I want you to listen to this now for those who don't know about this, is going to bring up something that is in the book. I wonder if you're listening to me, fam. And Mockler is going to say, well, I noticed in the book you mentioned, so so, so he's saying that the, um, Dr. Asfa Wasson mentioned in the book that Haile Selassie, around the time of the coronation, and what I'm going to say, I never hear about this, eh? Haile Selassie, around the time of the coronation, was considering uh, leaving his wife, Empress Menin, for, and he called another name. I can't remember the name, but you're going to hear it now. I'm, I'm yeah, man. I'm going to, you're going to hear everything for yourself. Not in my words. You're going to hear Mr. Anthony Mockler bring it up, and then you're, you're going to hear Mr. Aswawasin um, Asarate. Uh, uh, Casa <laughs> respond to it, and um, so they made a little chuckle about it, you know. And in Mister in in uh, in Doctor Asfa Watson's response, don't worry, he speaks of some reality of this, and I think it's the same. His grandfather Ras Casa, or someone of the sort would have come to the king and uh, I told him, man, you can't do this. Man, listen, you're going to hear him speak about it, not me. You can't do this uh, because of the the, the fate of uh, uh, faithfulness of uh, Empress Menin. Now, again, this is that specific what they mentioned in there. I never hear that outside of this conversation. Now, what I would have heard and I'm sure many would have read, is what he also goes into, which is what I mentioned earlier, the case of Lijuatsu. And now you need to understand again the Ethiopian context. Uh, even that whole tradition of, of, of you know, choosing uh, uh, arranged marriages, that is something that is just a reality and and was a reality at that time, is a reality in many places. And uh, in that day, many ones would have been literally arranged to be married to each other. That's just what it is. You know, again, I know we like to romanticize and many things. So we say, no, man, not the king of kings. But anyway, according to the history, you're going to hear it here too from, from the king's grandson. This is really what took place as for, uh, no, as for what's, what's his name? Lee Jiatsu would have stepped in, who was the individual chosen to be emperor when Menelik was looking to make a move. And he, he was the one that, to, um, that decided that Haile Selassie was to leave his first wife, who he had a daughter with. Yeah, man. Listen, man, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, man. Come on, stand firm. Yeah. This is not this is not uh superstition. This is not religion. This is reality. All right. Take your time. Yeah. Get a towel and wipe the sweat, whatever. Don't worry. <laughs> and he Lee Jatsu also made the decision to uh Empress Menin and her marriage. So I would see that they both married young. So, so a husband and a wife went home crying and the king and the queen came together. Let's listen to this. Um, uh, I mean, uh, now getting on to uh, Haile Selassie, I'd like to begin. But... No, and this is Mr. Makula now. Talking and as I said, as for Wasina Asarate uh, is there and a panel and an audience. Uh, 
about Heidi Selassie's personal life, about which we hear very little, really. There was, there was one fascinating point I picked up in, in, in the book, which was that um, uh, shortly after his coronation, and by the way, uh, today is not only All Souls Day, um, but the 85th anniversary of His, his Majesty's coronation, um, which is... No, 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 you heard that now. He said that today, and I was the one that said, Ja, someone in the audience there. Now, he's saying that um, today is not only All Saints Day, 2nd of November, but it's also the 85th coronation of Haile Selassie. So this was in uh, what was that, 2015, whenever it was. But it was the 85th anniversary. Uh, it's not only All Saints Day, you see? We, we, we speak about that almost every Halloween, All Saints Day and the opening of the portals. But anyway, so continue, Mr. Makla. So, what's the man right now? I'm drinking a toast to later on. Of course, you know, it may be a little bit um, uh, not choppy, but distorted in the sound. But let's just listen good and we will interpret for you. Uh, it, it, but that's a, a fascinating there in Asperonson's book, where he mentions that um, the emperor was considering, possibly considering, as his, shortly around the period of his coronation, leaving his wife, the Empress Menon, for the beautiful daughter, whom I never heard of, of our the beautiful sister of Rasail, the daughter of Ras Mangasha, therefore. Um, uh, Asta Mangasha. Asta Mangasha. And Asta, Asta Magasha. Now you hear it, you hear it. In fact, it is, it is Ras, it is um, Asper Watson that confirmed the name a while ago to clarify what the name was. It's in, it's in his book, you know, that um, Anthony Makla got the story. And, um, and Menon uh, said, well, if he wants to leave me, um, I'm... I've always had a passion for Ras Hyland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other way round. Yeah. No, 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 here now. I have to make that clear. I have to make that clear. Because a lot of laughing came here and what was said was overshadowed. And I don't think um, Dr. Asper Watson repeated it again. So hear what um, um, Makla is saying now. Makla is saying that, well, Empress Menin say, all right. <laughs> now, let me make him say it himself. So, well, if he wants to leave me, um, I'm, I've always had a passion for Ras Hyland. You hear that? And then, as for Watson, say, no, no, it's the other way around. But at that time, everyone is laughing. <laughs> the other way round, the other way round, the other way round, um, which was which seemed to be quite extraordinary. Um, you know, there's also an interesting point that I haven't quite got to. I looked at the family tree in the back of West Forsen's book, um, would, and there's really no reference to this in your book about his first marriage and his daughter, uh, Princess Romani, work and his his grandchildren by any Samson by any Mary. Um, and I know nothing about him or the background of that. So perhaps you could begin by talking about the family, the family life of Heinrich Selassie, avoiding perhaps the crime prince that comes in later. <laughs> All right, let's listen to this. <laughs> well, uh, as far as his first marriage is concerned, it was his, uh, uh, he married at a very young age. And uh, out of that marriage came Princess Romanoel. So this is the grandson now of the King of Kings speaking, Dr. Aswar Wasson Asarate. All right, good. I know some people are very uncomfortable hearing all of this, you know. but don't worry, man. Your brother loves it. It's better you hear it from me and we work it out and I explain it. Then you run into somebody and they tell it the same thing and you look funny by telling them, no, no, nothing goes nothing goes <laughs> But something goes Go ahead. 
It served, it was his, uh, uh, he married at a very young age. And uh, out of that marriage came Princess Romanova, who had two sons, and uh, uh, they had sons. And I think one of the sons should be here today. So we still that I haven't seen him yet. That is the first one. But uh, of course, then Liji Yasu wanted to uh, pull him because he had always heard that Rasmakorin's son might be the new leader of Ethiopia. And he wanted that some way or the other he should, although they were rivals, but somehow or the other, this man, this new young man, should be pulled into the family. No, no, well, they catch that good. So he said that Li Jiatsu realized that the son of Ras Mokene was a rival for the throne. And from his point of view, he wanted to do something to bring him into the family. I think he said into the family, but maybe closer to the family might be the better thing. And that is why he, Lijuatsu, made all of these political decisions which involved two divorce or divorces and a marriage. Okay. All right. And so, so, he gave his niece to the emperor, she was married to us. Uh, well, he gave his niece to the emperor. And he tried to remember who the emperor's niece was married to. Uh, not the emperor's niece, uh, Li Jatsu's niece was married to. Yes, Empress Menin. To the emperor, she was married to us. And he took her from there, and this was an official political marriage, you could say, which then became a really great love affair, one has to say that, they were incredibly, incredibly close. And I want to hear that now. So, now I mean, you don't have to run from the history, you know. It just is what it is. If you follow, they get cut. It is what it is. Hear what the brother says here. And he took her from there. And, and he, Lee Jackson, took her from him. And this was an official political marriage. And this was an official political marriage. You see? Which then became a really great love affair. Which, 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 here is the man, which then became a really great love affair. And if you study people, you can see just the whole action and even the tone of the voice kicking for, 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 you know, the genuine framework that a really great love affair. Okay. And he took her from there, and this was an official political marriage, you could say, which then became a really great love affair. One has to say that. They, uh, One has to say that. Incredibly, incredibly close. They became incredibly, incredibly close. Listen, <laughs> he's repeating, repeating that, you know, he's not, it's not a joke. Remember, this is the emperor's grandson. I mean, you don't have to run away from the reality of what history has presented you. But let's dig into the nitty gritty. Many of us sing the hymn, God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Eh, eh, that's just how the Lord works. And so he gave his niece to the emperor, she was married to us. And he took her from there, and this was an official political marriage, you could say, which then became a really great love affair, one has to say that, they were incredibly, incredibly close. 
And so he married Empress Lenin, out of which came six children. As far as this little episode is concerned... Uh, no, 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 even before you go to that episode, dear so and that is key, because... Someone may know something I don't know, but I never really, uh, maybe, maybe I would have overlooked it. But this this episode is history, but it's not something that I pick up from even the emperor in his, in his expression. But I know, paraphrase it, that the emperor speaks about marrying Empress Menin because she was fertile. I'm sure we, those of you who study the king, come across the speech where the king said he married to the empress because she was fertile. I don't know if you need to answer. I'm not taking away from the history. Look at the families, the family talking about the history, the whole audience, half of the audience is almost like Ethiopians, you know, when you forgot the name of Empress Menin's uh, previous husband. Somebody in the audience tell him so it's not like if, you know, we can pretend to be so far away and actually act like we deny him. But what happened when they came together? What happened when, when, uh, when Lee Juatsu, the political leader at the time, came in and made certain political decisions. Let me just show you something that I missed again. When the king was crowned, Negus, there was a coronation for that as well. This is spoken of in the autobiography. I don't recall how long the king took to prepare for that coronation. But there was an incident when, you know, Empress Zadidu, being the empress of Ethiopia, she would have been ruling in Addis Ababa. Now remember, the emperor is the king of all the kings. Haile Selassie was Prince Regent since 1916. He's the Prince Regent. And in 1928, he became Negus. Now, for those who know the story, you know, and I like to equate the story to the, the story in the Bible when they wanted to crown Christ king and he ran away. You know that part where they say, we're going to crown your king, and he, he dodged them out. Well, on a political level, they, they, they decided that Rastafari should become king. He, need, he should get the title king. And there was some vibration that if he became king, he would not be able to stay in Addis Ababa because by right, you know, you can't have two monarchs as such within one space. In a sense, Empress Zedita was like already the head of all the kings. But whatever decision was made, he ruled in Addis Ababa as the king. But initially, it was not something that he desired. It's right there in the book. Yeah. And it was the individuals that said that, no, nah, man, you will be our king. It's arms they bring to the king. Arms, like literal arms. I think they had a tank <laughs> outside of the fence waiting. And they say, well, you know, my lord, we want you to be king. <laughs> and the kings are like, well, he just joyfully took, took the opportunity and he went on preparing for his coronation. Yeah, not the coronation as emperor, but the coronation as king. And, and I bring up that story just to show you that, well, according to the king's own word, this is not something he wanted to do. 
And this is one of the critical steps in him stepping up to the stage of emperor. And he said, well, this wasn't, this wasn't his choice. That's not what he wanted. It's not as if he looking to be, he just doing what he had to do. And fellas came and said, hey, my Lord, we know who you are, you know, but we have to, we have to demand this from you. And he said, well, I'll do it. Yeah. And it worked out for the better. So if history and if the universe bring Li Juatsu into the picture now, and Li Juatsu was the one that said, hey, leave Hong Kong. You, you come. You all together now. And then here began a love affair that is second to none. <laughs> here began a relationship where the two were incredibly, incredibly close. Everybody know the story. Everybody know what happened between the 1936 and 1941. The emperor speaks specifically how the empress met him was a, a, a infinite strength to him, his best friend, the only person he could trust. Even as they say at her graveside, he would have said that there was no fault that he would have found in her. You're not the king of kings, ain't that lie. There was no fault that he could have found in Empress Menin. He was crowned with the mama in him. I don't know what they're talking about, that other story. Bring a source. You have to bring a source to that one. I'm not even entertaining that one. But he was crowned with Empress Menin, unlike any other coronation ever, anywhere in the world, not just in Ethiopia, anywhere in the world. And Mama Menin would have proven herself until the very day that we saw her last, if you get what I'm saying. It's a deep vibration, you know. So however it would have happened, it was just the divine will. You know, this is why we have to take our head outside of the spooky level. We have to take our mentality outside of the, the fictional way of thinking. You know, that's why I said when you watch, when I was watching the video and the king gives um, uh, Queen Elizabeth the kiss of death, the brother jump out of the couch and run out of the, <laughs> run out of the room and say, no, nah, no, nah, somebody slice up the video. You know, I hope that brother would have evolved by now to understand that this is not religion and this is not spiritism. This is just reality. So, so, so Empress Menin and the King of Kings, all evidence would have proven, you know, and, and you would have heard his own grandson, which whatever memory he would have had, and of course, what he don't remember, the family, the tightly knit family would have spoken of and he would have seen it expressed. We don't have to, we know it. Clearly, you know, we speak of the, the beauty of the emperor, we did a program the other day with the other prince and the TBN people, and they were talking about his sweet grandfather and how Haile Selassie was the epitome of, of what you call that stuff. Forgiveness. He was the billboard, I think that's the word they use, pardon, billboard of forgiveness. But still, it's not just him alone. There was a, there was a, a connection a synergy, if you would, between himself and Empress Menin, obviously. And that's why you could get a result like what the good doctor is speaking of here. You know? I love a fear he called it a while ago. You know, just imagine that. What kind of language is that to be? <laughs> yeah. But he wouldn't say it like that unless it was that. You know, because he, he, as young as he may have been, and again, what he has not been privy to, he would have heard of that he could relate to us that this was a love affair that maybe many would literally crave to have one like. And also emphasizing how extremely close they were.
Holy Bandi will I have Silasia Rastafari. So, run family, give, give thanks for mm, all ones who are even with us at this moment. Give thanks for all ones who have taken the time. We have like five minutes moving up until midnight at least on this end here. So give thanks to each and every one that has taken the time to sit in and you can still, you know, put a like on the video of about 45 people in the house. Give thanks family for taking the time and coming in and I, I pray that the reasoning would have been an inspiration to, to each one as we continue to celebrate and glorify the father and the mother of creation, just reality, you know? Yes, my Lord and Majesty, give thanks. Holy Emmanuel, I, Selassie, Ja, Rasta.